And so some might say, why talk about tahajjud? Why talk about the night prayer when people are struggling with the five obligatory prayers? And I ask myself that question as well. If someone's struggling with the fara'id, how can they even begin to entertain Qiyamul Layl, to entertain the idea of praying at night? And Ramadan is of course an exception. You find people that, just like people fast Ramadan, that struggle with other obligations in the deen. And we ask Allah to make Ramadan, the fasting of Ramadan, a means for them to fulfill the other obligations. But just as people you know, can fast Ramadan, but they can't do a lot of those other things throughout the year, in many ways, people sort of relegate this practice to this special 10 nights and that's it. And we don't really touch it. And maybe one day my faith will get to the point that I feel connected enough to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I can start to entertain that conversation. And then once I start to dive into the books and I start to read about the way that the Salaf, the way that the pious predecessors viewed Qiyamul Layl seemingly as an obligation, not an obligation in the technical sense, which we'll get to, but as an obligation on themselves for spiritual health, it can be demoralizing and depressing because you read that and you say, where am I? And these people who would blame themselves so much for missing one night of Qiyamul Layl, and I don't remember the last time that I prayed a meaningful night. Of foremost, when you talk about coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is true that ما تقرب إلي عبدي بشيء that no طرته عليه than what I have already made obligatory upon them. You can't prioritize the nawafil over the fara'id. You can't prioritize the voluntary deeds over the obligatory deeds. However, if a person tastes the sweetness of certain voluntary deeds, not only can it help them be more consistent with the obligatory deeds, it can help revive the spirit of those obligatory deeds. In fact, which is what Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said about Surah Al-Muzzammil. If you read Surah Al-Muzzammil, the third revelation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is a page and a half. The second half is one ayah, is one ayah. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says that Allah withheld the second part of Al-Muzzammil for an entire year from us. Meaning what? When Allah first revealed to us, Ya ayyuha al-Muzzammil, qum al-layla illa qalila, nisfahu aw inqus minhu qalila, aw zid alayhi wa rattil al-Qur'ana tartila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu and to the Ummah by extension, to stand up and pray at night to stand up and pray a significant portion of the night and to recite a significant portion of what was revealed. Aisha radiallahu anha said, for a year, the obligation upon us was Qiyamul Layl. Meaning Qiyamul Layl, the night prayer, was an obligation on the Ummah for an entire year before the obligation of the five prayers came later on. Similar to how we have Ayyam and Ma'dudat, some days that were, obligate, that, that were obligatory for fasting. But when Ramadan came, they became voluntary, like the fasting of Arafah and Ashura and other days like that. Okay, so with the prayer of Qiyamul Layl, she says that for a whole year, and this was the most difficult time in the life of the Prophet ﷺ and by the Ummah who was facing persecution and had no community, which is one of the wisdoms that the ulama mentioned. They didn't have a community to gather. They, they had no masjid. They had Dar al-Arqam to sneak into and to study and to do what they could. But everyone really had to pray by themselves. For a whole year, she said, we all prayed until our feet would swell. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the second part of it, which rendered the night prayer voluntary, but the Prophet still maintained the habits. Meaning the Prophet still would pray until his feet would swell. And of course, many of the companions would maintain that habit. And there was a wisdom to that, that when you are struggling, this practice, is not just a means of giving you great perspective and great connection to your Lord, but it also provides a unique level of relief, of hem, of stress and anxiety. And that's something that's very unique about this particular habit, this particular good deed when you read about it, the way that the companions and the Salaf and the pious predecessors speak about this act in particular as being one that removes stress. You stand up at night, you have a direct connection to your Lord. It's quiet. You don't have a meeting coming up, right? You, 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 can, you can create the scene, set the scene. The kids are most likely sleeping. They should be sleeping at that time. It's just you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the rules of Qiyamul Layl are not as uh, rigid 
And I don't say that in a negative way, but with the, the maktubah, with the, with the mandatory prayers, there are certain things you can and can't do, but with the qiyam, you can spend the whole night with one or two ayat. You can allocate certain time to your sajda, certain time to your standing up. It's a moment of joy. And when the scholars spoke about it, that's what they say. And it's very interesting because just like with fasting, you know, you always start reading about these studies to try to make you feel better about your faith. And you don't need to, right? The benefits of fasting. It just, it, it, it feels good, right? When you hear about the physical benefits and things of that sort as well. Basically, these studies confirming what you already have been acting upon because it was prescribed by your Lord. And so you read these studies about mindfulness meditation. 20 minutes a day, 20, 25 minutes a day, but don't do it all at one time because you need to break up your mindfulness meditation throughout the day because it will reset the cycle for you and get you back to where you need to be and put, put you know, between those breaks, those meditation breaks, everything in perspective and it will improve the quality of your sleep. And if you improve the quality of your sleep, then you're energized during the day. And I'm like, these people just need Salah. <laughs> they just need prayer. We already, know, we have something prescribed to us that is so beautiful. That doesn't mean that times of dua and dhikr and introspection are not good as well, but Salah really offers that vehicle and improves the quality of a person's day and a person's night. And we, when you think about the unique stress relief, Abu Sulaiman al-Dawrani rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Ahlu ta'ati you know, people spend the entire night binge watching movies or, uh, you know, hanging out. And there are halal ways to spend time as well, right? But, you know, there is a certain relaxation. I need some relief tonight, so I'm going to spend some time and I'm going to just, you know, kill some time and feel good. And sometimes, if it's halal, it's good for you. But what he was saying is, Ahlul Qa'a, that people who have established this night prayer, even if it's a small portion, that they are in more joy than the people of Lahu with their Lahu. Now we're not even talking about people of sin, right? That's a whole nother level. And he said, you know, describing it, he says, He said, it's as if I could see my heart laughing when a person enjoys that night of prayer. He said, He said, had it not been for Qiyam al I really wouldn't see any use in living in this life. I, I don't think about anything in life as giving me as much joy as I do Qiyam al-Layl. Thabit al-Bunani radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he used to say, مَا شَيْءٍ أَجِدُهُ فِي قَلْبِ أَلَذُّ عِنْدِي مِنْ قِيَامُ al I have not found anything in my life that is just sweeter, gives more pleasure. That's how they're speaking about it. Then Qiyam al-Layl. Al-Fudayl rahimahu Allah ta'ala, he said, أَفْرَحُ بِاللَّيْلِ مُنَاجَاتِ رَبِّي وَأَكْرَهُ النَّهَارَ لِلِقَاءِ خَلْقِ اللَّهِ he said that I love the night prayer, or I love the night because that's when I get to meet my Lord. That's when I get to spend time with Allah. And we were talking about the last few weeks, how people can be exhausting. He said, in the daytime, I'm not so crazy about because I have to meet the creation of Allah. Dealing with the Lord at night, dealing with people during the day, there is a peace and a tranquility that comes from that, that makes what comes throughout the day more bearable. And that joy is freshening. That joy is replenishing. That joy is meaningful. It's, you know, people are searching for it here and there. And it's in those few moments at night. And I'm going to get to this at the end, but that doesn't mean praying all night. That means those few moments, that 10, 15 minutes, that 20 minutes of recalibrating every single night, at some point in the night, between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala, he was asked, ما بال المتهجدين بالليل من أحسن الناس وجوها. He said, how come the people that sleep the least at night have the freshest faces during the day? It's as if they're they're energized. قال لأنهم خلوا بالرحمن فألبسهم من نوره. Subhanallah. He said because they spent the night in seclusion with the Most Merciful, so Allah dressed them with His light. سعيد بن مسيب رحمه الله تعالى. He said إن الرجل لا يصلي بالليل. That a person spends the night praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in seclusion with their Lord. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them nur, gives them light, gives them something that would, that, that would connect them with every single Muslim. 